Hey players, how you doing? And welcome back to Player's Guide. On this episode of Player's Guide, I'm going to be covering more homebrews for the Nintendo Entertainment System. So the first game I'm going to cover is called Temple of Dilemma. This game was sent to me, and I'm very appreciative of that because there are so many great homebrews out there that I want to play, and I just cannot afford uh, to buy a physical copy of all of them. Uh, but if there is a homebrew out there that you think I should play that I haven't covered before here, um, or could be found that it's a new one on itch.io, let me know in the comments below because I am excited to play them. But without further ado, let's dive into six homebrews for you to check out. So as I mentioned, the first one here is Temple of Dilemma. And this is a game where you are working your way through various stages within a temple. Uh, each stage has a boss, but you're gonna be going screen to screen, uh, single screen uh, platforming with uh, various obstacles and enemies. This game has a temple exploration theme to it, much like something like Tomb Raider or Indiana Jones does, except in this game, you are playing as an ape, a uh, monkey, uh, who is exploring the temple, looking for a banana and collecting all kinds of treasure along the way, particularly these uh, green stones, these gems uh, that contribute uh, to an accumulative uh, count. Now, I'm not sure if you can buy something later on in this game uh, with those uh, gems that you collect or, or how exactly they work, but there are different collectibles. There is health uh, and other items that you can uh, pick up as you progress through the game. Next game is a free game that you should go and pick up. I'll put a link to it below, The Great Gatsby. Now this is a very short game. Um, there isn't a lot to it. Uh, you could play through it in a single city in maybe 20 minutes, even if you have never played it before. The game is very forgiving. Uh, the controls are very tight. The graphics are great. Uh, this is a really good quality game and it follows the classic novel. There is a little bit of dialogue here in the game, but it is mostly just platforming, where you're jumping, throwing your hat, you do change characters from time to time, uh, but this is an excellent game. It, I mean, it's not a big game, and it's not the most difficult game, but I thoroughly enjoyed this game and would recommend it to anybody who is into homebrew games. Raleigh, I hope I'm saying that right. I called it Roly before in the past when I talked about it on the Retro Gaming News, but I think it is pronounced Raleigh. This game is a side-scrolling action platformer where you are playing as a fox character uh, and you're up against some different uh, animal enemies. I know there's snakes in it and, and some other uh, creatures that you might recognize. There's a bunch of different power-ups. There's one that's really neat where you could just kind of walk across the screen. Uh, but yeah, all different types of power-ups that you collected this one. The main feature is that you turn into a ball and roll. Uh, so maybe you're supposed to be like a, an armadillo character, but it looks like a fox to me that rolls around. And you could get quite a bit of speed when you're rolling too. You also need to roll through certain areas uh, that you cannot access otherwise uh, just standing and walking. But this is another excellent NES homebrew that is, you know, well thought out, you could tell, and inspired by uh, various other games on the Nintendo Entertainment System. Serial Cafe, this is a game by Rigged Games. That's John Riggs, the uh, infamous retro gaming YouTuber. He talks a lot about uh, different NES games, and he's started making his own. Now, you may know some of his videos where he has covered how to hack games or repair certain games, and uh, he, I guess he's transgressed into making his own NES games. There's a couple others that he has out there, but I think this one is very notable and I wanted to mention it because I did get my heads on a copy of this one and I found it to be very fun. It's a lot like Tapper, so if you like Tapper, you're definitely going to like this game. Anyways, Jod Riggs is the character in this game and he's serving up cereal in a cereal bar. You control him and you need to dish out different cereals as fast as you can to all the hungry customers coming up to your cereal bar. It's a very fun game. 
and uh, it's easy to just pick up and play. There's not a lot to it, not a lot of dialogue or, or any of that. You just serve it cereal as fast as you can. Plummet Challenge. Now this is a fairly short and simple game. I've mentioned a few, you know, more arcadey, simpler type games here uh, that aren't the biggest games. And this one is basically you're playing as a like a stick man, and you're plummeting. You're falling uh, into a pit, but as you fall, you want to collect as many of the different. Uh, little coids or jebs as you can some of the different colors are worth more points and the idea is just to fall and collect as many points as you can as you're falling and working your way through the stages uh, to get a high score and I like this because there's not enough really good high score games out there anymore you got to look at retro games if you want to uh, play for a high score um, and there's not a lot of newer retro games even coming out where high score really matters. But I've mentioned a few here where score is everything and this is definitely one of those games. Machine Cave is another NES homebrew that was released by Mega Cat Studios. In this game, uh, you are playing as a machine rocket and it plays similar to Solar Jetman if you've played that game on NES. And what you're gonna be doing for the most part is collecting items and dodging and avoiding uh, certain obstacles. There are a few enemies that you're gonna come across in this game and it scrolls from uh, single screen to single screen in it. Um, again, it's all about the controls and navigating yourself throughout these stages within this game uh, without taking too much damage and destroying yourself. There are six more NES homebrew games that I think are worth checking out and hopefully you saw something here that you're going to enjoy playing. Some of these games are free so you got nothing to lose by downloading the ROMs and popping them onto your power pack. That is it for this episode of Play's Guide. Please consider subscribing to the channel if you are not already and until then I'll catch you on the flip side.